Welcome back, 1998 Subaru Outback. Got to do plugs and wires, dual overhead cam. This will apply to many different years of the dual overhead cam. Uh, it's a little tight to get at some of these, but uh, it's doable. So we're just going to do plugs and wires in this. I don't know when they've last been done. Um, I imagine it's been a while. This engine's been, the head gaskets have been done on it. But I'm guessing, looking at the wires, they didn't change the plugs and wires when they did it. So I don't know when it was done last, so we're going to do it. I'm going to take the battery out of here, just get it out of the way. It makes it a little easier to get in here uh, to get at these. So I'm going to end up taking this off of here to get this out of my way and give me a little more room. Dig that out of there because it didn't make the floor. I don't know where it went, but I know it didn't make the floor. <laughs> so I'm gonna find that. That'll be fun. Uh, that'll be a great time. I'll plug the sensor here. Let me get this, get this out of here. I'm gonna do uh, air box here. Fight me. Somebody's just fighting. I got a connection here. Could probably leave this here, uh, the rest of the bottom half of this air box, but in all honesty, I'm just going to take it out because it gives me a more, an easier shot into that. 13, I think. Let's see if this will get it. Yep. Probably could do it without removing that, but why fight it? Here. Much easier shot at these plugs now. Plugs and wires on this side. Passenger side first, one and three, two and four on the driver's side. So, show you a part number here. Right from Subaru. One and three are the same. Let me turn you around so I can see what I'm doing here. Hopefully you can see that part number, uh, 22451AA750, same wire, direct from Subaru for both one and three. So I'm just going to pull them out, I'll try these first and see if I can just get a hold of, hold of them with this. I think this might be easy, yeah, right out of there. Let's put it up out of the way. That's quality tracking on there, just for me pulling it out. But I don't know. All right, so I've got a wobble extension here and a 5 8 socket. I have a special, thought I had the right uh, 
spark plug socket with a wobble bow into it, but it's the wrong size for what I need, so it's not going to help me. Just feed that on there. Sneak down in there. Get started here. There we go. Not very tight at all. Really not, not very tight at all. say they don't look great. There's one. Let's see if we can sneak in the back cylinder here. I think we can. Maybe. Maybe not. There it goes. Yep. Get the whole thing out of there in one shot because of the spark, the length of the spark plug. So I've got to disconnect the, my extension from it. Take that out first. Then should be able to grab it. I think. Drop on the floor. And there it is. The gap looks pretty big. They look like they're worn. I don't, like I said, I don't know how old they are. The plug, these are Denzos, NGKs. I have Denzos. I'm just going to carefully kind of slide that in. You can feel it kind of drop in. Don't bang it. You don't want to dip, You don't want to close that gap up. I'm going to slide my uh, <coughs> wobble extension back in. I always like to start them by hand, just to make sure they're going in okay. Okay, get my ratchet out. Just a little, not a lot. Same thing, starting by hand. Okay. Just trying to drop it on the floor. All right, not too bad. And I just want to back you up there a little bit. Replace these wires. If I can get them to let go. It says both these are the wire. Both these wires are the same for one and three, but they both say three on them. That's right from Subaru, though. I don't know if that's wrong or not, but wow, look at that terminal. That's cruddy. That's, that needs to be cleaned up. We'll clean that up really dirty on the coil. We'll place these, push this out of here somehow. Yeah, right like that. I don't think these are any length difference. Let me clean that up real good. Let's get some dielectric grease for the new, uh, new wires. 
a little bit of grease on both ends here. I like to kind of work it around the inside of the boot. Hopefully you heard that popped on. That side's done. We're going to go around the other side. Well, this side's not, not as easy to see. You definitely can't see the back one. It's a little tighter. But uh, pretty much the same procedure. See how it goes. This front one shouldn't be hard at all. It's pretty easy to get to. It's the back one it's, that's tight. Ninety degree boot on cylinders two and four on the driver's side, straight boot on the uh, passenger side. We'll clean that up as well. Do that first, so clean that coil terminal up. Get at it. Definitely wobble extension for these, so you're going to have a really hard time. This is the plug that I'm using, Denso plug. We left the worst for last. The one that's going to be hardest to get to. But we'll get it. I'm going to do the same thing with the back one. I'm not even going to film it because you're not going to be able to see it anyway. I can barely see it. I can barely get my hand in there. But it's doable. If there's anything really strange that I have to do other than what I've been using. Which I'm sure I'm going to have to put this in by itself first and then put this on it. But I'll come back when it's done. Uh, the one thing I will say is you're not going to be able, once you get it loose um, to a certain point, you're going to have to pull your ratchet off. And this ratchet, and I know they have specialty ratchets for this, or they have, you know, you can buy a, a, a quarter inch ratchet, higher end stuff, and get an eight, and get a, I'm sorry, a three eighths inch ratchet, wrong again, quarter inch, which is smaller and slimmer, and get a three eighths uh, drive put into it. So it's even thinner, but this is a pretty thin. You're going to need a pretty thin, and then you're going to have to pull this off because you're not going to be able to back this all the way off with the ratchet still on there. And then you have to finish it up by hand. Then you got to pull your extension out because you can't pull it out all in one piece. Pull your extension off of here, and then pull it out. Not, not a big deal, though. Not too bad. I'm going to put the new one in and uh, come back when that's done. Not going to be able to see anything, so... 
Uh, I've got both my plugs in now. I'm just going to put my wires back on. Uh, not too bad. That's the hardest one, the one on the driver's side, rear, number four cylinder. Um, it's just, it's tight. It's just tight, but it's doable. It's not too bad. Same, same deal as before. A little bit of dielectric grease. Both ends. Notice this. Look at the divots right through the jacket into the core on this wire. I'm surprised it wasn't misfiring really bad, but it wasn't. But that's that's right through the insulation all the way through. I don't know what, what are these. I don't know what they are. Uh, Spark Transfer International. I have no idea. Not OEM, that's for sure. click. There it was. Pop right on there. It's tight getting it in there, but it goes in there. That's good. Alright, that's it. Everybody's, uh, everybody's happy. Now I'm just going to go back uh, put the air box back in, put the battery back in, you don't need to see that, there's not much to see. Um, and I'm going to take it out, test drive it, make sure everything's good, but that's pretty much, it took me about an hour, never done these 2.5 before, uh, dual overhead cam, which is a little tighter, because the head's a little bigger, uh, but uh, it's not bad, uh, it's really not that bad. Some people freak out about this, you hear all kinds of horror stories, but honestly, not too bad. I'll show you what I had to use. I think I find it. I think they're underneath. I think they're on the ground here. Yep. So this is the only things that I used really as far as spark plug socket is a that's a two or three inch wobble extension. So it'll it'll wobble, obviously. Uh, regular five eighths spark plug, and then this. So. This is a gear wrench, and you can see it's pretty thin. If you had a thick one, you're going to have a hard time, especially on that back one. You're going to be... I had to pull this out because it's almost up against the frame to get it out so I could finish and just turn it out by hand. But uh, a big one, you're going to have a problem with. You need a pretty thin-headed uh, ratchet for these. Um, but not bad. Not bad at all. Well, that's it for this. Uh, test it out, took it out, test it out. Took it out to test drive it. Um, no misfire codes or anything like that, but it's running a lot better. It's definitely running a lot smoother than it was. Uh, I showed you that uh, one cable, that one plug wire, which was torn up. Um, the heads were done on this at 247,000, 20,000 miles ago. Literally, well, just about 20,000 miles ago. No way these have only been in here for 20,000 miles. Uh, they probably stuck them right back in. Why? I don't, I don't know. I don't know why people do that. Same with the wires. Um, but it, it's definitely running a lot better than it, than it was. It wasn't running terrible, but a lot smoother right now. Um, I know a lot of people always see freak out about doing the 
plugs on these. You can't do them. You got to pick the engine up. Not on this one, and I'm guessing not on the other ones either. You can you can get your hand in there. That back uh, plug on the driver's side is the tightest one to the frame, but you can still get in there and do it. It took me about an hour to do this. I've never done these this two five before. Uh, you know, next time I do it, I know exactly what I need to do. Half an hour, 40 minutes maybe, but not bad. If you have to do this for uh, your 98 Outback, I hope it helps you out. If you like the video, subscribe below. Thanks for watching.